Thank you, Olga. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Stephen, so much. And now our final session, Sir Richard Branson. He is best known as the chairman and founder of Virgin Group. He is a wildly successful entrepreneur who's made a name for himself in music, aviation, and space travel. He is also a passionate advocate on big social issues, from the environment to drug policy. And that's what he's here to talk about today and about a new book of essays called Ending the War on Drugs. He wrote the book's introduction. Steve Clemens is back to lead our final conversation. Come on up, Richard. Um, Richard, um, welcome. The Atlantic has been so inspired by Virgin. Uh, yeah, I want you to be here. We can uh, arrange a neck massage, uh, feet. Uh, can we get him a, a, you know, a, a basket? Bar? There we go. <laughs> Oop. And I just spilled my coffee everywhere. Everyone, don't ignore this. Um, but we've got people that can take care of it. Um, in any case, thank you so much for joining us. I want to set a preamble up for the folks. First of all, we have, for each one of you, a copy of this book, uh, Ending the War on Drugs. They happen to be in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, uh, and and uh, we, Richard was hap uh, generous enough to, to send them over. They got locked, you know, talking about ending the war on drugs, we have a war on the book about ending the war on drugs from the US Customs Service. So they sent them to Cleveland. They're going to come out. They're going to be in my office. And I welcome, where's Megan Devlin? Megan? That's Megan. She's my assistant. Um, call her up. And you can stop by the Watergate and uh, pick one up. It's fascinating. It has a foreword by Richard Branson. And so uh, please thank him, because he is the, the one who is uh, sharing all of these with you. Secondly, four years ago, we had an encounter. And the world was very different then. You and I had a one-on-one -on -one interview. It was about this same subject. And we thought we should return to it, because the terrain has changed somewhat. And why don't you just share with us what you've seen change in the four years since you and I had that conversation, that interesting conversation a few years ago at the Atlantic. Um, OK, so, uh, so I'm, I'm a, what's called a global drug commissioner, which you normally become. You get things, a badge? You become things like that when you get old, basically. You get a badge with that or something, uh, yeah? Um, let me just see. I'm sure I've got a, yeah, here we go. Look, I'll have a, I've got, have a uh, badge. I have a badge. There's the, my badge. I don't know. Actually, wow. it's not. This is for the guy that went to the deepest part of the ocean, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, um, and the, the Global Drug Commission is, cons con consists of um, 16 ex-presidents. Um, mainly from a lot of them from South American countries, um, who felt that the uh, global war on drugs had been an abject failure for the last 60 years, and that um, something had to be done about it. Um, uh, and it also includes Kofi Annan, the ex-Secretary the, the ex, um, uh, General of the United Nations, um, and here in America, Paul Volcker, George Schultz. Um, and, um, and I'm the only entrepreneurial businessman on, 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 the, on the group. Um, having you know, read the studies um, uh, as a businessman um, uh, and seen all the reports, I would have closed the war on drugs down 59 years ago. I mean, it's, it's, been, a, it's been an abject failure. Uh, it continues to create um, absolute misery throughout the world. Um, you know, people get shot. Uh, you know, people get life in prison. People are thrown off buildings. People are, um, you know, like 1,600, 1.6 million people, mainly black people, are incarcerated in American prisons, um, and so on and so on and so on. So, um, so the Global Drug Commission uh, has been um, trying to get countries and states uh, to experiment with different approaches. Um, and the best way of seeing, you know, whether, whether there is a better way is, is to actually experiment. And, um, and the commission, you know, welcomes what's happened here in America, um, the medical marijuana centers, um, uh, the, you know, Colorado, Washington State experimenting with legalization. Um, and uh, so in some areas, I think America has moved in the right direction. When it comes to um, hard drugs like heroin, um, we, we, the Global Commission feels that America's got a long, long way to go. Um, and they should adopt the principles of um, other countries, um, like Switzerland or Portugal, um, where uh, if somebody has a heroin problem, um, they're not um, immediately thought of as um, you know, somebody who should be criminalized. Um, 
uh, they're actually told to come forward and, and, and they're helped. And there's a place where they can come, where the state will actually give them their heroin fix, um, where, where the needles are clean, um, where they're not going to get HIV, they're not going to overdose, they're not going to get hepatitis. Um, and, um, uh, and they no longer need to break and enter into people's homes in order to get the heroin fix. Um, and then, you know, after a few months of building up a, a rapport with the, with, with the place they come to get their fix, uh, they then are generally helped and they become useful members of society again. Um, America has a big heroin problem at the moment, and, um, and I can't think of any other way that, that, um, uh, that, um, of, of reversing it. Um, uh, Portugal managed to reduce the amount of people taking heroin by you know, close to 90% over the 10 years since they started that program. Um, and take us deeper into that for a moment, because that program began in 2001. I don't know how familiar our audience is with Portugal. It's not sort of a nation that pops up in daily conversation often, but it is why we met four years ago. Yeah. So give them the profile of what Portugal did and what the results have been. Yeah, so I mean, Portugal, Switzerland as well. Um, Ruth Dreyfus, president of Switzerland, brilliant lady. Um, she did the same in Switzerland. So, I mean, I mean you know, they, they, had, they, they had the problem. It was number three, um, you know, drugs was the number three most important issue on, in the Portuguese political agenda. Um, and, and you just had a, a bold uh, leader of Portugal who, um, we, 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 the commission believes, decided to do the right thing. And, and, and he just said, you know, if you, if you, if you, have, an, if you have a problem, come forward. Um, and, you're, you know, you'd have, need to have no fear about coming forward whatsoever. Um, and, um, and they just set up these, these centers around Portugal. They, people came forward. Um, and, uh, and as I say, they, you know, they, uh, after a few months, they, they, they were we, we weaned off their habit. Um, and, and, um, uh, and the um, amount of casualties as a result uh, has, has almost disappeared. And by the way, in Portugal, instead of it being number three in the political agenda, drugs, um, it's now something like number 20, 21 in the political agenda. It's just almost, almost become non-existent. Non -existent. Um, and, and America needs to do something radical like that. I mean, I know that I saw one state, I think, is thinking of experimenting, but that's all. I mean, America is a big country with a big, big heroin problem. Um, and, um, you know, if the state can take control of it, uh, you get rid of all, the, all those people pushing, and you don't, know, you don't know whether it's clean heroin. I mean, people often overdose from heroin from something which is laced with something horrible. Um, and at, the, at, least they, at least they know you know, know what they're getting. And, 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 uh, uh, Can you frame for us, Richard, the scale of the global problem? Um, in, in, and sort of what I'm thinking of is you had Ernesto Zedillo, the former president of Mexico, write one of the essays in this book. It's a really powerful and interesting, almost a confession, if you will, uh, and in which his own drug czar was later known to be part of one of the major drug cartels. I mean, the, the, when you think about the scale of this, so do you think that if you were able to get a transition in the United States, you begin robbing the fuel of that, of that massive global industry? Yes. Um, I mean, the, uh, it was the, U, the, the, the US um, who really pushed onto the world this, um, uh, you know, through the UN, um, you know, this draconian drug policy on a global basis. Um, and, I mean, I live in the Caribbean, and uh, the um, people in our region, they know that, you know, everybody smokes marijuana. Um, they, they know that it makes more sense to regulate it than to um, criminalize these people. Um, but they're terrified that if they do so, um, their, their citizens will be subjected to problems when they come through American customs, um, uh, that they'll be punished you know, by, by the American government in some way or another, and so on. So, um, so they're not willing to do it. But right now, because of what's happening in America, America's beginning to look quite hypocritical, putting pressure on other countries. And, that, and that's a good thing. Um, and, and, um, and I think that uh, the, way, the way the pendulum is swinging, I think, um, uh, that with, with America, you know, I, I mean, most states, the majority of states, I think, have medical marijuana outlets now, and most states will have them soon. 
Um, and uh, and from what I, you know, from what the Commission have read um, on market research, there, there hasn't been an outbreak of massive problems, even where they've legalised marijuana. I mean, like um, it, 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 it's been um, not that dissimilar to when prohibition of alcohol was lifted. I mean, there, you know, there's always, you know, there are alcoholic casualties, but there were alcoholic casualties when it was when it was illegal. Um, and um, uh, and, uh, and, and you know, but you've got rid of Al Capone. You've got rid of the 390 billion going into the underworld, uh, which is currently happens with drugs. And that how much? 390 billion, billion yeah. dollars. And, and that money, I mean, I, I was in a state uh, a couple of weeks ago, went and visited the Alcohol and Drug Rehabilitation Center. That center is now being funded from the medical marijuana sales. Um, and um, uh, as is as are a number of schools in the state, so um, so so much better that way than than than, than the money you know, you know, going going into you know into an underworld. Some of those people in the underworld, actually, I'm sure, are great young entrepreneurs who um, <laughs> who um, uh, who will be casualties <laughs> of of legalization. Um, but anyway, they can go. They can come and compete with us in the airline world or other, other worlds instead. So, um. you, you were just sharing with us something really fascinating that your company works really hard to prioritize hiring talent who, of people who were drug convicts. Yeah, I mean, we, we, um, I was in uh, Australia about 10 years ago, and I went and visited a, a prison in Victoria and, um, and talked, to, talked to a lot of the inmates. And, and you know, when they're released from prison, they're, they're literally dumped, uh, dumped out on the street outside the prison, which is miles from the nearest town, mm. uh, without any transport, without any money, uh, without any accommodation. <laughs> uh, and you know, no wonder they end up reoffending. Um, uh, but I, um, I went from that prison to visit a company called Toll Holdings, that, and they'd employed 600 ex-prisoners. You know, the hand on heart, they say, they claim, and they say, and I, and I have no reason not to believe them, that not one of them had reoffended. I mean, they were so grateful for the dignity of work and their jobs. And so, um, you know, so at Virgin, we, 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 had, we try to take on as many um, uh, ex-convicts as we can for all, all sorts of different, you know, I issues, not just drugs. Um, and, um, you know, I mean, a senior person in the Virgin group um, you know, to spend the weekend in prison, but the, the, the other five days they come and work at Virgin, and um, and one of our best employees. And um, um, I slipped up when I was twenty on a tax thing and spent a night in prison. And um, and I was very lucky I didn't spend a few months in prison. And if I had, you know, most likely wouldn't have been sitting here today. So um, very grateful to be given a second chance. And I think. Um, people should be given second chances in life. Yeah, you, know, you're, you deal with a lot of people who have run governments um, who share with you that they wish they had done more when they were in power. And I think Bill Clinton uh, told you that as well. Um, you run a company and a brand that is bigger than most governments. And I'm, I'm you know, sort of interested in that. But, but you're rare. There, there aren't a lot of other business people doing what you're doing. And so I, I'm interested in one, what do you think you can do to get more leaders to do what you think needs to be done when they're in power? And secondly, what do you do to get more Richard Bransons in the game? Well, recently we've set up something called the B Team. Um, the B Team? The B Team. Um, well, this, not the A Team, the B Team. <laughs> um, but it's a, it's, a group of, it's a group of... Do you have a hashtag? Uh, <laughs> it's a group of business leaders. Uh, you know, like-minded, I must admit, you know, like Paul Pullman from Unilever and right. Mohammed Yunus and others. Um, <clears throat> and we're trying to do exactly that. We're trying to, um, in the same way that the elders, which is a group of ex-politicians um, are trying to tackle um, conflict resolution issues, we're, we're trying to galvanize business leaders to speak out um, on issues and to get out there and tackle, um, tackle some of the problems of the world. Um, and and we're trying to say to, to the business community that if we leave governments and social sector to do it, not all the problems in the world will be resolved. If every single business can adopt a problem, um, we, we will get on top of most of the problems in this world. 
Um, and we're, we're beginning to get a lot of traction. I mean, in, in here in America, there was uh, a, uh, a, you know, a, a gay, an anti-gay law passed, um, or about to be passed in a particular state. And, you know, a whole group of business people got together and they wrote to the governor and said, look, you know, if you, do, if you go ahead with this, we're, 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 we're going to withdraw our businesses from your state. We're not, we're not going to do business in your state. There are a few of those states. Um, yeah, 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 we're, we're, picking, we're, we're, picking, we're picking them yeah. off. Uh, there's about four or five. But, you know, I mean, and, and that started in, um, in Uganda, in Africa, where they said that, um, that, that it's going to be life in prison for gay people and, and life in prison if you didn't report a gay person. And, um, and, uh, and we said we wouldn't do business in Uganda again. And um, so I, I, I do think that, um, that business leaders have got clout and they should use it um, when people are um, uh, mistreating minority groups in, in, in a bad way or, or other, for other issues. I'm always interested you know, that you've become a, a, a sort of oracle over the years on decriminalizing drugs and taking different therapies, and now you do have senators beginning to talk about it in a way they weren't just four years ago. You have states experimenting, um, and you just shared with me that you were in Colorado. What did you see in Colorado? Um, I, saw, uh, I saw a lot of happy people. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, a lot of happy people. <laughs> um, no, I and mean, what I, else I mean, did you but, see? But, the, but, but the, interestingly, I was I was in Colorado five years were you, ago. Were I, you happy in Colorado? I, 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 I was in Colorado five years before that, and I saw a lot of happy people. So, uh. um, but um, so I think the I, I think the thing is that um, you know by legalizing, um, it hasn't resulted. Uh, in a lot of casualties, um, and uh, and it's got rid of, you know, the fact of, of young, you know, people people in Colorado being put in prison. It's got rid of uh, all all the downsides, um, and you know, yet there's always going to be one or two casualties from from changes changes like this. And you know, people have got to be careful not to drive when they when they when they're stoned and so on. But but you must be careful not to drive when you you've had too much alcohol either. So. Um, so obviously people have got to be sensible about it. And you went to a treatment center? I went to a treatment center that was funded 100% from, um, from the taxes from medical marijuana. So, that, you know, so that, was, that was tremendous. I'll tell you a funny story. I don't know. This may not, this may not sound funny, but it was funny to me at the time. I'm, I'm so prepared I was in, to laugh. I was, oh, thank you. <laughs> I've got one, one laugh, yeah, <laughs> guaranteed. So I was, in, I was in Australia, and I went to a needle exchange in Sydney. Um, and not only a needle exchange, it was somewhere where, where people could inject heroin. And, um, and I, went, uh, I went into the place where, the, where, where people were lined up injecting themselves, and I stood behind this uh, woman and she just finished injecting herself, and um, she, she t turned her head and looked up at me and she went, "Fuck, I'm having an LSD trip." <laughs> 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 anyway, so um, but um, all right, it was it worked. It sort of worked. <laughs> uh, you got about <laughs> half the room. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was um, anyway. We, we we both had a good laugh at a, a good laugh at that. And I, I told her, no, it really is. It really is me. I'm not. I'm not. not it's not, right. not. Not your trip. <laughs> Richard, you have good tweets. I, I like your tweets. I follow you on Twitter. Um, they're irreverent. They're fun. You did um, uh, commend President Obama for. In some of his pardons, he's had 61 pardons that related to drug sentencing, and he issued pardons to those people, and you said, that's great. D you know, be honest here. Has, sh should President Obama have done more? Give him a grade. What's the Richard Bran Bran uh, you know, Branson grade of President Obama and how he's dealt in this arena? Um, I think that... Um how do you grade in England? <laughs> a through F? Uh, or? Well, I don't know, one to ten. But, but, but uh. I think I think the I think first of all, um, thank God he didn't intervene when states um, w went out and experimented with different different approaches. That was great. He could have intervened. He could have stopped it. Um, and for that, he gets ten out of ten. Um, uh, I think the fact that he's um, I think only yesterday spoken out about companies taking on. Um, people and giving people a second chance, you know, 10 out of 10 for that. Um, the, 
Um, uh, I think the yeah trying try, you know trying to be bolder in in um, uh, changing changing the uh, laws. I mean whether he, I don't know whether he could have done. I mean with with Congress and and um, the, the, the Senate, but um, you know but obviously you know we, we, the Global Drug Commission would like 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 America to have gone further, um, and. Um, uh, but at least he, you know, he hasn't, um, he didn't do what Reagan did, which was, was um, you know, reverse everything and put us back, you know, to reverse all the President Carter's policies, which were going actually in the similar direction to where America is today, and, and um, put, it, put, it, put the whole country Have you like stayed that. in touch with Jimmy Carter? I see Jimmy Carter. I'm seeing him next week. Um, so we, 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 we formed this organization together called the Elders, um, which um, with Nelson Mandela originally and kind of sound like the Avengers. Uh, yeah, they're maybe they're maybe not quite as sexy. I mean, uh, <laughs> the, 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 the average age is about 85. Do they have secret costumes? <laughs> um, they, they, um, although, although, um, although Jimmy Carter, I mean, he is the most remarkable individual, just as one example there. You know, I mean, he's, he's 92, just had you know, cancer issues, you know, 18 months ago, and he's on a plane to London for, the, for an elders meeting, um, but almost definitely going from there to some remote place in Africa on to some remote place in Miami. And then he's going to go build a house. And so on and so on. <laughs> and so, um, um, but, um, but uh, yeah, so, we, so um, Kofi Annan chairs the elders, and, and the elders are there to try to uh, look at you know, some of the bigger issues in the world, speak out about them. Um, most of the elders would be on the same page as what we've been talking about on drugs. I mean, some of the elders, Kofi Annan is on the Global Drug Commission. President Cardozo is on the Global Drug Commission. Um, uh, so uh, most of them are, I don't, I don't think any of them disagree with, with this approach. Um, and, um, uh, and, um, and they, you know, I mean, for instance, you know, recently they went and spent the weekend with President Putin in, in his Dachau in Russia. They believe, you know, the, the way to try to, you know, um, resolve conflicts is to um, talk to your enemy um, or talk to your you know, enemies in open inverted commas and, um, and try to win them over. And that's what they're trying to do behind the scenes. I want to go to the audience in, in a moment, but, but I'm, I'm interested, you know, one, one of your theories that I've, I've listened to, and I know you're going to be back, uh, so talking in, about drugs, any chance a, of another cup of coffee? Yeah, cup, yeah, <laughs> cup of coffee. Uh, uh, me but, too. With milk, uh, please. Yeah, with milk. Um, and welcome to our airline. We'll get to the airline <laughs> later. Um, so, I mentioned your theory. You know, entrepreneurship is is that you're very high on feedback, seeing the world as it is. You know, building. What kinds of blind spots do you think you had, and the elders had on on? this topic? Like, what things do you wish you had known at the beginning in terms of tra tackling the war on drugs that have helped you? I mean, what, what have you learned in the, in the journey you've, you've taken so far? I think instinctually, most of us were, felt this way before we started studying, you know, studying all the facts. But that's um, sentiment, not strategy, yeah. right? So, so then, then we did uh, we did a whole lot of really, and, and uh, you know, love love you to go to the Global Drug Commission website and, and you know, if you've got time, wade through some of the reports or glance through some of the reports. How do they I mean, like, find that? Um, so they, so they, you know, website. Like, we, we, um, ah, don't ask me details okay. like that. Anyway, I'll, global, I'll, I'll global give you the website <laughs> when you come for your book. All right. Um, so <laughs> the, 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 the Global Drug Commission. Yeah, global drug. Um, they, they, um, but I mean, like in-depth studies on, uh, you know, the. Um, the amount of people getting HIV from using right. dirty needles, and um, in, 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 you know, in, in depth studies on um, you know, people going to be sent to prison for a minor drug offense, um, uh, then coming out again, not being able to get jobs, you know, and, and, and you know, the, the ratchet ups that, that, that takes place. Um, and, uh, and then in depth studies on countries which are taking a better approach and, and and so on. So, um, uh, so, uh, so, so by seeing all this research, it confirmed to me that um, our, our, in, our, our original instincts were correct. Yeah. Great. Well, let me go to the audience and open up the floor. We've got a microphone. Yes. Um, is it Will? Yes. There we go. 
Uh, hi, my name is uh, Will Tucker. I'm with Advocom Group. I was just wondering, so you say uh, with Colorado, not all problems have been solved by uh, legalization, and there are still some questions around, say, uh, the potency of drugs available or infused products and children having access to that. Those are problems that will probably only be solvable with federal action, especially around uh, changing the Controlled Substances Act. Um, you spoke to leveraging business against uh, state-level discriminatory legislation. How can wow. responsible business executives and advocates uh, exercise influence on a federal level to allow this sort of states as I mean, laboratories? I'm, 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 I'm British. British. Welcome, to, welcome to American <laughs> politics. Uh, so Will's asking what should business, I mean, I, um, uh, first, I, can I just yeah, deal with yeah, the first ahead. point, yeah. and then maybe I'll yeah. pass on the second point. The, um, not pass, I'll pass it on. Uh, uh, they, um, um, and what the fuck was the first point? Um, they, they, uh, sorry, the... Um, business leverage, essentially... Uh, no, sorry, no, 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 it was, sorry. sorry the, 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 so the, quanti the, 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 the quality of drugs. Now, if something's legal um, or decrim, you know, like it's, it's a state run, um, the state can go in and say, you know, like the, 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 I mean, these particular forms of marijuana are far too strong and... Uh, and you know, either you tax them really, really highly to make sure that people don't buy those, and they go for the ones that are, uh, and, are not going to mess with their brains. Um, and, and that's much easier to do than if you just leave it to the underworld and the people on the streets who can, you know, I mean, you, no, there's no way you can work out what you're taking, how strong it is, how potent it is. There's no one there to test it. Um, I mean, in, in, in uh, Holland, uh, where ecstasy tablets were illegal, the police very sensibly said, you know, bring your ecstasy tablets to us before you go out tonight. We'll test to make sure you're not going to die from taking something that's not really an ecstasy tablet. I mean, it's a, a long-winded way around to, to avoid, you know, the, the, the better way would be to regulate um, and make sure that the um, authorities can keep an eye on these things. Um, on the other point, I'm afraid it just went beyond me. So, <laughs> but, um, uh, other, in the very back, yes. I would like to be American because I would then still own an, Ameri uh, own an airline in America. We're going to get um, the airline. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask about the airline. That's my question. Yeah, go ahead. Hey there. Uh, my name is Param Jaggi, and um, I run a tech company called Hatch in D.C. Um, my question is, um, where do you see software and technology playing into combating the problems of the war on drugs? Um, there's so many examples where software is, uh, with Mark Andreessen, and it's eating the world and uh, solving so many problems indirectly. Um, the best example I can give is, uh, Uber um, mitigating transportation pollution. Um, it's an indirect solution um, to a huge problem we face. I think the, uh, I, I mean, we were talking about social media and the importance of that. Um, I mean, I've got nearly 30 million followers on social media and I use, use that um, following to um, get out there and try to get you know, get, edu educate people who are following us and hoping that they can then share it with other people. And, mm. Um, and, and, I, and I do think that that, um, you know, that helps a lot. And, um, and I, I, you know, there, are, there are other people with big followings you know, who feel in a similar way to me. So I can you know, share, share what I'm doing with them. And, um, and um, uh, if you've got any other ideas that you think could help, we'd love to, love to he hear from you. He invited you to lunch on Twitter. I didn't know you were the guy, oh. <laughs> but uh, I did uh, see it. Well, um. <laughs> and, and, and if you could scribble, any, uh, scribble um, any, any thoughts down, I'd be very grateful and give, give, give us a back. Really. Actually, why don't you stand up? Have you got, do, you have any, do you have any off the cuff thoughts that you want to yeah. share? Yeah, bring, 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 go to our friend from Hatch. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I was playing around this idea with um, with stocks, right? So if you can track um, if you can track human behavior through social media trends, um, then you can pr you can predict uh, like big scandals, right? So if if you know that pe more people are talking about Volkswagen on on Twitter and you know that rate, um, then you can predict that the stock's probably going to drop in the next day or two days. Uh, but you can apply that to something like the war on drugs. Um, see what people are talking about, so you can kind of be more preventative rather than reactive. Right. Um, I don't know. It's just like following, no. following mass behavior. So I'm still open for lunch if you are. Very interesting. <laughs> very well, it, sounds, it sounds like you're going to become very wealthy with your first idea. And, and then, <laughs> then you're going to spend all that money sorting out the next yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Hi, my name is Chris Fowler from Creative Science Labs and the BMW Foundation Responsible Leaders Network. I'd like to thank you initially, uh, Sir Richard, for giving me an opportunity to answer the question from my 10-year-old daughter, what's a virgin, when she heard about your company on the radio. Uh, <laughs> so thank you. I uh, appreciate that. Um, uh, I guess my question is two-part. Um, the first part is... With your perspective from uh, you know the global organization that you serve with, are you finding that the uh, sort of narrative arc that has, that we're finding in the United States, going from uh, criminality and um, uh, to uh, addiction being a, a mental illness, or, or addiction as an illness? Uh, if you're finding those trends uh, consistent around other places in the world. And then the second part of the question is, while that change in America has been correlated some, uh, obviously to, to advances in brain science, it's also correlated to the prevalence of these issues in white communities. So I'm wondering if you're finding that like, we as Americans are more comfortable talking about it as illness because it's happening to people that look like us versus people that look uh, uh, other, uh, and if you're finding these trends uh, consistent around the world. Fascinating. Good questions. Um, thank you very much. Does his, have, his doesn't have milk in it. Uh, I we do have milk. We'll, yeah, we'll, no. yeah, can we bring have a little milk? milk? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Sorry. Thank you. We'll be right there. So sorry. Really sorry. Um, the, I mean, Europe, uh, I think, has been quite a long way ahead of America. On, on, on these issues, um, and, um, and generally, I think, yeah, much more understanding and you know, more cooperative with people. There, there, are, there are countries in this world that are horrendous, um, you know, like uh, in Russia, if you have a, if you have a um, heroin problem, you're thrown into prison. Um, I think two out of 10 people die within the you know, three or four days you know, from withdrawal symptoms. Um, and, uh, and, you know, there's no treatment, um, and, uh, and, it, and it doesn't work. Ukraine, actually, is not is not that much better, um, for left, leftover days from being connected with Russia. Um, you know, Iran, you're shot. I mean, you know, there's, there, there, there is, there's a lot of dreadful examples around the world. Um, and... Um, uh, and I, and my, my instinct on the other thing, but I, I don't think we've done any research on it, is um, that, yeah, what was when people thought these problems were um, black problems, I'm afraid in America a lot of white people didn't, you know, and people in positions of power didn't do a lot about it. But uh, now heroin is very much a, you know, right across the board problem in America. Hope, hopefully they'll finally wake up. <laughs> but, uh, right. Uh, right up here in the front, and we're going to bring you a microphone. So, yeah, uh, John McNamara, <coughs> U.S. State Department, retired. <laughs> so, uh, during my career, I would accompany the U.S. Drug Czar at the time uh, in the Bush administration around London, uh, where he would try and explain U.S. war on drugs and defend it. Was he what, part of a drug cartel? Uh, yeah, it was a different kind of czar. Okay. And, uh, and uh, he made one argument that I thought was pretty good, which was that uh, uh, youth addiction uh, is the huge problem. That uh, even with alcohol, the age of first use is, is a terrible predictor, uh, a very powerful predictor of your likelihood to abuse that drug later on. He said, if we can just keep keep them from uh, first use until 21, 22, or something like that, they're much more likely to use it responsibly. And that, for him, was justification for, uh, for the war on drugs. Comment? Thoughts? Um, uh, it's an interesting point. Again, I don't think we've done any studies on it. Um, maybe, maybe if you have a study, we'd love to, uh, love to look at it. Um, they, um, but. You know, if you take, if you take um, pot, um, uh, all right, who, sm who smoked pot in this room? <laughs> Come on, be honest. Who smoked pot in this room? <laughs> That's better. All right. <laughs> the, uh, Didn't inhale. Uh, my God, what a lot of, uh, you yeah, know. <laughs> I thought you said there was an honest group of people. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 <laughs> you, you should have seen them this morning. They've come a long way. All right. <laughs> all right, but more, more interestingly, uh, 
you know, by the, by the age of 30, who was still smoking pot. Okay. Yeah. All right. So one, one hand goes up. So, but, but the point I'm trying to make is that, that um, you know, lots of young people experiment, um, but the vast majority of them, you know, move, move on to alcohol. Alcohol. Who smokes alcohol in this room? Who, who drinks alcohol? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, they, 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 move, they move from pot to alcohol and, 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 and they, and they give, give it up. So, um, and the amount, of, the, 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 the amount of people who um, uh, have casualties is, is not that, it's, it's very similar to the amount of alcoholic people who have casualties, maybe slightly less. Um, and they're not violent. I mean, it, you know, like you don't have any of the really, really nasty downsides of alcohol with it. So um, they, um, but um, uh, yeah. So I mean, obviously, you know, if I could have told my son that uh, he can't have a drink till he's 21, and and or he can't have a joint till he's 21, he, he would have just gone and done it behind the behind the shed. He wouldn't have told me. Um, you know, as it was by telling him. You know, just do it. Do it in moderation. You know, he would do it in front of me, and maybe even let me have a puff occasionally. And, <laughs> and, 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 and you know, and you know, now he's thirty. He's you know, he's 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 got children, and he's you know, he's moved on to having an occasional drink. So, um, so I not. I honestly don't think. I don't. My, my instinct is that's. Um, you, you, the, um, well, first of all, I think it's unrealistic to to, to try to try to say that people before the age of 21, 22 can. Um, I mean, you, America is one of the few arcane places in the world where it says you can't have alcohol before 18, is it? 21. 21? I mean, it, it, it honestly, just, uh, yeah, I mean. Uh, anyway, in England, it's, you, you could get married at 16 and you can have alcohol at 16. And, and in America, you can get married before you, you can have alcohol. But you can't drink it till Yeah, way. anyway. <laughs> so we're getting right at the end of this and we're failing as an airline. This is probably going to happen with, you know, like Alaska Airlines will not bring you milk. Um, <laughs> and, uh, uh, ah, we do. Yeah. Talk of the devil. Oh, there. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, we're, we are redeemed. Uh, Thank you. There you go. But, but just as we wrap up, I'm, are, are you in this for the long haul? Is there a point where Richard Branson gets so disappointed with a lack of progress, you say, okay, I'm taking my, my toys and going home? I mean, of course, of course yeah. not, no. I mean, we, we're, um, I think, having met you, neither of us give people who give up on things. So. <laughs> um, and, um, no, and I, th and I think, you know, slowly but surely, pro you know, thing, things are moving. And have you right talked to, I mean, last time I asked you four years ago if you talked to President Obama about pot, and, and you shared a little item. Have you talked to him lately about pot? Um, I... I haven't. I haven't. Uh, I haven't seen something lately, we can so. tweet. No. <laughs> yeah. No. No. They, uh, no. I'm, I w I'm looking forward to him stepping down as president and having a chat with him. Will he something. join the elders? Uh, that's up to the elders to decide. Um, but uh, <laughs> he, he, he's uh, and and you know one of the rules about the elders is that they must have eschewed politics, and we'll have to see whether you know he wants to just you know give politics a rest. But I mean. You know, there are some incredible people in the administration at the moment um, who would make wonderful elders, and um, we'll see what happens. And just to close it out, tell us what you really think about the Alaska Airlines acquisition of your airline. Um, well, I, I mean, I've, I've written about it. I mean, I, um, we, we, when, when we set up Virgin America 10 years ago, American carriers were, were dire, um, and we wanted to bring a decent airline to the States. Um, Thank you. And, um, <laughs> Uh, and we, we, we got these planes, we got our staff, we, we got the chief executive, we, we did all the rules as per what the American government told us to do, and uh, Alaska and American Airlines and others objected, and we were grounded for two years. So we went through hell trying to get the airline set up, um, and they argued because I'd actually interviewed the chief executive, and I was English and not American, uh, that that precluded us from setting up in the States. And, uh, and in the end, we had to ask him to leave, and we had to get another chief executive, and we finally got going. Um, but the, the problems was they, they, made us, uh, they made us a condition of us getting going that we had to only have 20% of the shares voting. Um, so when, this, uh, when Alaska and JetBlue came in uh, with um, big, big money offers, um, sadly, the other shareholders decided to sell. Um, and, um, but we're, we're, you know, we're in talks with Alaska. We're telling them... And thank you know the public, of, of, you know they are also telling them, 
uh, and the press are telling them, you know, that, that uh, it's a great company. Don't, you know, what, what you've bought is something very special. Uh, treasure it, and, and that's what we're, we're I'm hoping. Which the new that. airline called Branson? <laughs> it doesn't sound so sexy as Virgin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, ladies and gentlemen. Let me first of all say. First of all, we will, for those of you who would like to get it, we will um, somehow stockpile and be happy to give those of you, since we had tried very hard to do that, uh, this book, Ending the War on Drugs. I've been able to go through it, and it's, it's a fascinating collection of essays uh, by leaders and scholars and politicians and, and folks from different corners. Um, well, just so before, I hope you'll just enjoy before, it. How many yeah. people uh, how many people disagree with what we've been talking about roughly today? Uh, in the room? Be, honest, be, be really honest. Yeah. Will, yeah, I know, okay, well, yeah, and, and, and right here. So we got two, we got, two. we'll meet you after. No, uh, do you mind, okay, that's yeah. fine, but anyway. Yeah, but go but, ahead. No, 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 it's interesting. No, do, do, do you want to just, do, did you want to? Can we get a microphone this? up here real quick? Oh, great. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, it's fine. I'm not with the National Council anymore. No, that's fine, that's fine. <laughs> No, we love you anyway. Certainly not all of what you're saying. Yeah. The war on drugs is a ridiculous term from way back and, and totally failing policies. I do think there are some things that you say that I would disagree yeah. with. We know a lot about brain development with adolescents, and it is really important that we pay attention to their overuse of alcohol and marijuana. And so, 100% agree so far. Yeah, yeah. So uh, all I'm saying is I think there yeah. are reasons to yeah. have things like age limits before we just right. say, sure, go ahead, because we do have the science and the research to back some of that up. And I think if we as parents explain that to kids and talk about it, I understand they are going to do things, and there's no doubt about it. But I have four children, and believe it or not, two waited and two didn't. Yeah. And, um, yeah. and so it, I think there are ways to talk about the research and the science for kids to understand, because what he said is true. We do have the research to show that the earlier they start, the more likely they are to be addicted. Mm. And so if you can reduce that risk, to yeah. me, it's worth it. Yeah, I mean, I, I would much rather, um, I'd much rather, much, much rather have my son you know, never spoke pot, didn't drink. You know, I, mean, we, I mean, we all know how high, how high life is. When we when we when we don't take any any substance, like coffee, anything, um, um, but but I suppose my feeling is it's just not realistic. And and um, and if you tell children they can't do something before 21, um, I mean, how many people didn't? Uh, how many people had a drink before 21 <laughs> when when the law was? You know, Billions. I mean, everybody. Anyway, so so I'm just saying that it, I, I'd much rather my much rather my children uh, did it in front of me. Uh, and you know that I could tell them the importance of moderation, and you know, but it, 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 it's. Um, well, and all those conversations are important. Right. You yeah. Don't wait till they're twenty-one to yeah. talk about that. Which I think, I think, to just again to wrap up, one of the, the the concerns a lot of people have, what they hear as your prescription, is that a legalized um, drug environment that is regulated for age and other things that it will become just easy for everyone, that, that use will go up. And I'm interested, I think that is the dominant paradigm that many, many people have, maybe not in this room, that they just think it will become easier for everyone, that use will go up. Um, what's your response? No, it, 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 I, it's a, you, can, you can imagine that people would think that. So, so what you need to do, let, let, all right, just going back to heroin. So mm -hmm. you don't make heroin available in every chemist shop in, 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 uh, in, in America. You, you make heroin available maybe in two, you know, two or three chemist shops in every city. Uh, and the people who are there are there to you know, oversee, the, oversee the injections. Uh, um, uh, you know, that you've, got, you've got social workers there. You've got um, people there to help those people get back on, on, on the right path. Um, but um, so you make it not that, not that much easier. I mean, at the moment, you can get heroin on most street, street corners. But... Um, but um, but you, you encourage people to come to these centres. You, you obviously you know the, any, you, you warn people of the dangers of you know of, of you know heroin something which you know you, you mustn't mess with you mustn't take. But if you are taking it, you know come come to these centres and, and be helped. Um, and um, and I think you know by people going to those centres, it means that those people on the streets who are pushing that drug, um, laced with embalming fluid or whatever it is they've laced it with, um, they go away. Um, they, you know, they, 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 they now no longer exist um, because, um, you know, because 
uh, you know, because they've got competition and, and they've got and, and they've got a much better better form of competition. Um, and um, you know, cigarettes is quite a good example. Cigarettes are really dangerous for you. They're going to kill one in two people who smoke them. Uh, and um, and you know, the, the, the clever governments in this world are reducing the amount of people taking cigarettes by. You know, you go into a sweet shop. You're not allowed to have them on display anymore. I don't know what happens in America. You have to ask for them. They're hidden. They're right underneath the counter. The tax is really high on them. And slowly, you know, every year, it's coming down. It's coming down. It's coming down. And I think you need the same sort of approach. Ladies and gentlemen, Richard Branson. Thank you very, very much.